Welcome on in. It's an opportunity to get to know the new head coach of the Utah State Aggies, Blake Anderson, along with athletic, athletic director John Hartwell, with a uh, big day here at Utah State University. Now, this is an opportunity for you to ask questions. Uh, I'm going to stay out of this as much as I possibly can and just relay the questions to uh, Coach and uh, John Hartwell. So, uh, again, if you're on the Facebook page, just enter in your questions. I'll get those here, and uh, you have a chance to do a Q&A here with the newest head coach at uh, Utah State. But, Coach Anderson, let's talk a little bit about the process. When did it start to heat up with Utah State, and, and what, was the, uh, what was the process like that brought you here to Logan? That's a good question. Um... It's really, it seems like it kind of happened in a whirlwind. Uh, I want to say on a Sunday night was kind of an opportunity just to meet. And, and then really within, uh, within a few days, I think we were at a point where, where I think we both realized it was a great fit for, for us both. It's a little strange because you're in season. The season yeah. been pushed back a little bit. We actually were supposed to have a game uh, that was canceled due to COVID. So there was a, logistically a little bit, a little bit crazy. Uh, but from beginning to end of the process, uh, and, and I think John could tell you more, I think we felt really, really comfortable coming out of the very first meeting. Although we'd met each other, we'd been around each other before, and have a lot of mutual, um, you know, mutual friends that he's worked with, and that are my colleagues that that I, I think are really close as well. And I think all that kind of bridged the gap a lot. So we came out knowing a pretty good about a uh, bit of, yeah. about each other coming out of that first very first meeting. John, it seemed like uh, did, it didn't take long for you to zero in on uh, Coach Anderson here. Yeah, you know, like, like Blake said, you know, we knew each other before uh, when I was at Troy and obviously his, his time at Arkansas State. But, uh, you know, the synergy uh, in, in our meeting, uh, the, the, the things that he stood for or stands for, um, you know, knowing a little bit about our program and then talking about his offensive philosophy, uh, his, his his ability to develop young men, not just as football players, but as men. Um, you know, all those things just clicked. And, uh, you know, we, we continued conversation over the, over the next uh, three or four days, and it, and it ended up working out well. Well, we got a lot of questions rolling in here. They want to put you to the fire here There's a little bit. Well, we are yeah. right by the fireplace, yeah, so no we're in a good spot. So let's start here. Uh, your uh, preference in regards to scheduling philosophy, and I guess that applies to the two of you here, uh, but, but how, do you, how would you like to align your schedule? You know, I think a great formula at this level, at the group of five level, is obviously a power five opponent that uh, strategically, honestly, uh, like we did this year at Arkansas State, at Kansas State, uh, that, you know, I know we got Washington State coming up. I think those are great games. Iowa coming up in the near future. I do have Bama. I do have <laughs> yeah. Bama. I've had some experience with those guys already. Yeah. A, a power five opponent. I think the fan base wants to see that. It gives you a great opportunity to step up yeah. and win that game, and it creates a ton of momentum when you do. Uh, I think two really good cross-the-line uh, group of five opponents, whether it be regional or strategically conference to conference that you're going to recruit against. Uh, if you can get wins across conference lines or against – people you recruit against, yeah. those are huge. And then typically a, a, an FCS opponent to round it out. I think that gives you an opportunity on a great year to go 4-0. You know, on a good year, maybe you're 3-1 and, 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 and you've played great against a Power 5 opponent. If you're going to finish the season top, you know, top 25 and the highest ranked group of five team in the country, you know, that, that, that four-game stretch can make or break you before you even get into conference schedule. And obviously you've got to own your conference to be in that kind of conversation. You know, uh, another question running in, and of course everybody wants to know about the offense, uh, what kind of offense you're going to run. I went back and I watched a bunch of different games that you had, um, and I know in 2015 you ran the ball for 3,000 yards. Last year you throw for 4,000 yards. Does it just kind of depend on the horses you have there on that team? It really does. We're going to be we're going to be multiple. I'd say it's, it's basketball, fast break basketball on grass. Yeah. Fast break basketball on grass. We have. All been kind of playing in this spread tempo off and stuff. And we, we, back in 2001, when we developed this stuff, we took Rich Rodriguez's tempo run game, we took Mike Leach's air raid throw game, and we threw them together. And we've been developing it ever since. It's 2001, 2002, and you've seen it progress. And what you find is the versatility of it. A team that doesn't have a great passer but has a running quarterback. A team that might, maybe doesn't have great wideouts but has a great old line. Then you lean more on the run game, which we did a couple years there in 2015. Won a championship with that yeah. group. You know, this year we're number three in the country passing. We didn't run the ball as well. We're not built quite the same up front. I love the fact that it's versatile based off the personality, personnel that you have, the personality of your team, the quarterback that you have. 
but the system doesn't change. You just lean towards the type of uh, a plays and, and the, I guess the personality of the offense that, that your personnel fits. Now, we're going to pump it out, and we're going to spread it out, and we're going to get it to everybody. Very balanced run pass, but really balanced to me is doing what they want you to do, what the defense allows you to do, and spreading the ball to everybody. So we're going to see everybody touch the ball. Another question coming in about the transfer portal. Uh, do you plan on hitting it hard? And especially with the one-time free transfer that I assume is probably going to come Should into play here. Jan January pretty 12. Soon. It, it sounds like it's pretty soon it's going to be like the old Wild West out there. I'm a little worried that it might be like the Wild yeah. West. But uh, I mean, you cannot be recruiting in today's time without at least being involved in the portal in some, some way. And I think you'll find that we will have a handful of transfers that, that are attracted by the staff that I'm putting on the field, the offense and defensive programs that they come from, what we've done offensively and the success we had at Arkansas State. In this, you know, the difference about transfers, they don't really sign a letter of intent. So the fans may find out about them in January when they enroll in school yeah. or, or somewhere along that way, not so much on Wednesday on signing day. But we will, we will have some transfer guys come in if we feel like they fit our culture and fit what we're doing on offense and defense. What, what epitomizes the Blake Anderson culture? Uh, I talked about it today. I mean, I tell everybody, I'm, it's faith comes first. They, they need to be comfortable being around a Christian head coach that loves them and, and is going to pray for them and hold them to a, a standard that, that honors God. They need to, be, they need to love family. They need to, they need to want to be a part of a culture that's about family. And they need to come in. All egos checked at the door. Team comes first. Program comes first. No egos in the building. They love ball. They like the ball being thrown around. They don't mind working harder than everybody else. They're going to be right at home with me. Question on the defensive side. Uh, formation, thoughts on defense. I know a couple of years ago you shifted from a four-man front to a three-man front. Is there any thoughts coming in on how you want to handle it here? Well, we, we started out as a 4-2-5, and we had a lot of success with it. Uh, defense coordinator left and, and, and brought in another coordinator to do the same. We had so many injuries in that season that we had to shift to a three down front. We just didn't have D linemen to play. So that was more out of necessity than it was uh, something I wanted to do. But what I will say, we have, we're going to be in a sweet spot between the two. Yeah. You can't just sit in a four down in, in with today's offenses, but you are going to be out gapped in a three down against some of the 12 personnel, 11 personnel. Obviously we play, we play Utah, we play BYU, some of these teams that are going to play in bigger personnels then you got to have – so we're going to be multiple. What we are going to premium on, though, is speed on defense and, and aggressiveness on defense. Tackles for loss, sacks, uh, loss yardage plays are the premium. We've got to create turnovers and reduce the explosive play. But you will see a lot of different mobility structurally in the defense to fit what we're seeing. Another question on the defensive side coming in, I think it's a good one too, because we've seen offenses here that go high tempo. Uh, Coach Wells and Coach Yost ran it at a really high level. Um, and then there's a concern on the defensive side. Do you worry about a defense getting wore out when possession sometimes can only be a minute and a half, two minutes long? You have to. Number one, you're gonna, we're going to give more defensive scholarships. We're going to have more scholarship players on defense than we are on offense. Those guys all play on special teams. They're playing more snaps. The other thing is how, how do we train? We've got to play more players on defense. We gotta, we gotta play, you can't just leave a guy out there for the whole game. He's gonna have to, you're going to have to substitute him more. And then how we train is to build for the ability to play 60 minutes. Strength staff and then the structure of practice has to prepare those guys that game day actually slows down for them. Practice has to be chaos. It has to be brutal so that on game day it, everything slows down and, and, and they're, not, they're not fatigued. So there's a lot of different steps. But it starts with committing more scholarships on the defensive side of the ball than you do on offense. How do you tailor your offense to go fast but also be able to be productive on a day like this or in short yarded situations, yeah. goal line, things like that? Well, it, it starts with running the ball. I mean, yeah. we're spread, but we, if you look at, as you mentioned, we've had the ability to rush for 4,000 yards. Yeah. I've had an offense just like this that rushed for 6,000 yards in a season. I mean, it's possible, so you have to prepare. The mentality is we're going to run the ball. So another one, what is your favorite foods and restaurants? They say we want to make sure you're taken care of while you're here. Uh, well, I haven't had a ton of choices there in Jonesboro. We've been talking about, I'm, I'm excited to see some places that I've never seen before. Yeah. I like the local joint. Yeah. Now, we already stopped in Herms, and I had maybe the best cinnamon roll I've ever had. So there that was go. a good start. Uh, you know, I want to stop and try all the places that you would never get to eat at anywhere else. I was giving Chucky some grief about going to the chain place last night. Well, I said it was on Chucky. Chucky's got to hey, show you around a little bit. I, somebody else drove. That's where I went. I was paying. They were driving. That's kind of how it went. All right. So I want you to read this second to last question because I told you it was going to come up. I got to read. 
So how, 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 before we beat yeah, BYU, how, yeah, so how soon? Have you been briefed on how important it is to beat BYU? I have been briefed. I do completely understand it. And yes, we are going to work our tails off to get it done. I love that uh, I was reading some old interviews you gave, and you talked about coaching at New Mexico, coaching against Lavelle Edwards his last year. Uh, you don't come into this blind on the Mountain West and the landscape of what football is here at West. No, I, I like the fact that I've been through, and I know they're obviously not in the league anymore, and Utah was in the league, and I can sit here and tell you that we were able to beat both of them at some point. Now, was that a challenge? Yes, good football programs. But I love the fact that I've been through it. It's changed a little. I think all the conferences yeah. have. But I also think of the five power five con or group of five conferences right now, I mean, Mountain West can hold its own with anybody. I think you've got the American and, and Mountain West and Sunbelt that have clearly shown those three leagues can play with anybody in the country. And it's our job to raise the level of this league and keep fighting for that top spot. Another question rolling in about recruiting the state of Utah. Um, I know that obviously you've got to introduce yourself to a lot of high school coaches here, uh, but what are your thoughts on recruiting the Beehive State? We've we got to start at home. I mean, yeah. if you look statistically, there's typically about 25 to 30 Division One players in the state signed every year. We're not going to get all those guys. There's enough Division One schools that they're going to get spread out, but we've got to be competitive in that recruiting process. But we, we obviously can't build our roster solely at home, but we're, we want to get into every school. We want to talk to every coach. Uh, if we can't get in there physically, we're going to talk to them over the phone and evaluate every player in the state that potentially could play collegiate football. From there, we got to get into the other states at border. We got to get into Texas, California, and as I mentioned earlier, we got to get into Kansas Junior Colleges too. There's too many good players playing Division One ball and beyond in the NFL that we could have on our roster. So uh, that part of it is, you know, geographically, there's some things you have to do. I'm going to have to get to know the coaches in the state. I've not recruited in Utah before. Uh, you know, that's going to be one of my first things is getting to know. The, the people here in the state. A lot of the other areas I've been in before, but, but this one, it's going to take some time. I'm just going to do a good job of getting to know them. Does it feel like you're drinking from a fire hose with early <laughs> signing day coming up here in a couple of days and, yeah. you know, commits and, and trying to figure out what you have available on this team? A, a little, a little. I think I learned this, though, and, and John and I talked about this when we first sit down. You're not going to win championships in the first signing class, but you can lose them. Yeah. And, and so we're going to be really patient. We, we probably will not fill all of our spots you know, on, on Wednesday. We got COVID seniors to deal with, total scholarship numbers, watch the roster and see who's coming back. We got transfers in the portal. We're not going to rush out and sign. I and mean, we need to find out exactly what numbers we have and what spots need to fill. So I would think, don't get impatient. We're going to be a little slow in this first class. It's that second and third and fourth class with a year under your belt, two years. Those are the ones that are going to be critical to, you know, where we want to be. This needs to be deliberate, signees that we truly know yeah. that we know fit us how quickly can you evaluate guys uh, in recruiting you know i think it's a lot simpler yeah. i think the the, the the evaluation process for us is going to be re evaluating what we have here yeah that's going to take all spring and summer the recruiting process is pretty simple you've got tape you can talk to coaches the only thing that we don't have right now due to covid or and even obviously the move is that we haven't had the ability to see them in person yeah so, again, we're going to be very cautious and very deliberate about who we do bring in. We've got guys that are already committed. We're trying to find ways to fit them all in, keep some of them, maybe have to delay some of their enrollments, but we don't want to just go dropping a bunch of guys either. I mean, we want to try to find the guys that do fit us, and there'll be some of those guys that end up finding other places to go. Some of them will end up here as well. John, a uh, question rolling in on the evaluation of coaches and what you were looking for, and I know – Coach Anderson checks all the boxes, but what were some of the things that you were looking for when you, uh, w when you were out looking for this new head coaching hire? You know, we talked up front in the process about uh, offensive excitement. Uh, <clears throat> you know, that wasn't a prerequisite that it was somebody who came from the offensive side of the ball, but certainly the, the knowledge there and, and, and the plan from an offensive perspective. And uh, as Blake has talked about some of his offensive schemes, you're going to see high tempo, um, but also, as, as part of that, as we did the drill down on that, it, it has to be high tempo, but it has to have the ability to, uh, to be effective in conditions like we have outside right now. And, and the ability to run the ball in that situation is, is really important, too. Um, and then, you know, when you, when you looked at, uh, at building a culture, building a program, you know, uh, you know, doing that, when you look at, at Blake's body of work, uh, you know, over a bunch of different programs and, and specifically what he's done in the last 
seven years at Arkansas State, that was really key to it as well. Um, and, and then, you know, when you look also at experiences, I mean, he's been at every level from, from East New Mexico uh, all the way to the University of North Carolina. So he's been JUCO to Power Five and everywhere in between. And I think having that ability, especially, uh, you know, coming to Utah State, um, we have good resources. We don't have Power Five resources. So being able to think outside the box a little bit and do things like that, I think all of those things were key in the decision. Another question rolling in on the Facebook page. And again, we'll be doing this for about another 10 minutes or so. So if you have a question, let us know and uh, we'll get your question in. Um, will you continue to allow fans to come to spring and fall camp practices? Absolutely. Yeah, we'll try to be open as much as we can with the thought process of uh, being careful with proximity to some of our opponents. Yeah. That was one issue I really did not have at Jonesboro. We, we, the team on the other side of the state wouldn't play us. And we, we'd only played, you know, really uh, didn't have a lot of uh, local uh, close uh, games. So we really had open practices the entire time I was there. We'll be strategic about it. I would love to have the fans be able to, you know, be, you know, be part of what we're doing. And, and I think the energy just builds if you get to come out and kind of get to know the guys by watching what, what's going on. Another question. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your family, your three kids, and how they're doing. They're doing good. You know, they're, they're basically growing at this point. My oldest one is 26, Colton. He's there at Arkansas State, actually working with me there uh, as one of my student assistants as he's finishing up. Took some time off when my wife was sick, so he's, he's, uh, he's going to graduate a little later than we anticipated, but played ball and loves it. Going to be a coach himself uh, when he's done. Couldn't talk him out of it, huh? Could, I tried really, <laughs> really hard. Uh, Love to get him out here on staff with me at some point in some capacity, but he's probably going to stay put. He's in love, and oh, yeah. I don't think I don't think Corey's going to let him get too far from town. My daughter is a sophomore there at Arkansas State, and she's uh, she's just student enjoying what she's doing. She uh, nannies for a, a local doctor there in town with uh, a couple special needs kids and does a great job. She's about half married as well, and probably not moving too far away from from the, her her other half. And then my youngest son, Kason is in Tulsa. He graduated from high school. He's in Tulsa, wants nothing to do with football, and he is at the Tulsa Welding Academy. He was recruited there to come to school, and he'll be done in January, and I would expect that he probably will come visit and snowboard a good bit because he loves to, but probably be back, end up back in Texas where most of my family is from. My, my mom is in Waco, the Waco area. My brother is in Austin, and, and he loves it down there. We'll probably will end up back in Texas when it's all said and done. So just me for now. The, the girlfriend I have at a date probably at some point uh, will end up out here as well. Brittany and her two girls, nine and five, and Collins and Ellie. Uh, but she's working hard, and, and her schedules are a little crazy, so we'll have to see how that looks. Do you, uh, you like the snow? Yeah, we uh, got I love the snow. Mother love the, Nature saying hello to you today. Love to snowboard. Love to be on the, on the slopes. Come to Park City. Probably been out here four or five times. Okay. Uh, my, we would normally uh, Park City one year, uh, Breckenridge the next. My kids love to snowboard, so... Can't wait to get uh, on this. I got too much work to do to ski right now, just in case anybody's wondering, but we'll get out there when we can. <laughs> yeah, with another one. Did uh, John Hartwell give you a nice winter coat for today's weather? It gets a little cold out there in Jonesboro, though. And, uh, yeah, it's a lot colder in Jonesboro than it is here. I don't know if people understand humidity. how hu oh, the humidity, humidity just yeah. whew, it, it rolls right through you. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's much more comfortable. Uh, I, I will be happy to see the sunshine when it rolls out, but I, I don't, I'm not intimidated or or hate the snow by any means. Well, and a lot more comfortable in June and July, too, when oh, you open yeah. up camp. And, and we talked. He, he told me there was no mosquitoes in the state of Utah, and I was like, I'm in. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even ask what the contract was. I'm in. <laughs> uh, when you, uh, throughout, you, you mentioned how you wanted to be open to the community. Um, you're going to be at restaurants. You're going to be at church. Uh, and, and it seems like you want to develop a, a culture where people can come up and say hi and, yeah. and, and, and introduce themselves. Absolutely. They're the guys building this place. I mean, we didn't. This building didn't happen out of thin air. People gave time, energy, and money to make it happen. They buy tickets. They, they drive hours to be in the stadium. They, they travel with us on the road. I mean, how can I ask, ask those people to support us, and I don't want to have anything to do with them? Yeah. I'm, I, I got to. Now, I'm, there's times I'm too busy to, but, to give time, but if, if I see somebody uh, that wants to ask a question or if I see a kid that wants to play here one day, I mean, they look up to our t program. They look up to our kids. We've got to give back to the community that builds this program. So uh, I'm going to do everything I can. I speak in, in, in different uh, groups, share my testimony, uh, anything I can do to help energize the community, the valley, for, for 
not just not just football, but just the university in general. Uh, this is to me, it's all it's all about being together. Have you uh, tried Aggie ice cream yet? I haven't, but I've heard, and yeah. I'm trying my best to keep my weight down. But I'm, I'm gonna definitely yeah, have good to luck have some. here. Yeah, yeah, I heard it's pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad, not bad at all. Um, also, too, from a uh, from a coaching standpoint, uh, you referenced some of the coaches today. How long do you think until you'll have the uh, the staff? I, I think we'll be we'll be on the ground running uh, when before the kids come back. Most okay. most of the staff uh, hires are, are strategically already in place on paper, just trying to be respectful to their programs and let them finish. Uh, and then we'll start we'll start rolling out announcements as that comes. Uh, still looking and, and interviewing some guys that are here locally, already on staff that that have ties to the university that I haven't had the opportunity yeah. to coach with before. Would love to have some retention, uh, and, and we'll just have to piece that part together. And then probably the last couple pieces would be more off the field, peripheral roles that maybe have to do with recruiting and then just uh, branding. So, well, coach. Welcome to Logan. Welcome to Utah State. Thanks to everyone who asked some questions. Uh, you'll be part of the coaches show tonight. You'll be able to hear that on the radio. We'll have some more questions for you. And if you want to sneak some in, I'll make sure to get those in coming up tonight. But thanks for joining us and look forward to more of these chats. Thank you very much. Appreciate you, folks.